As we approach next week, this tropical wave you see right here could have the possibility of developing into a tropical storm. And not only that, we could see heavy rainfall as well as gustier winds associated with this tropical wave right over the Caribbean islands. Take a look at the overall composition of this tropical wave right now. We do see that there's quite a bit of convection going on. We have another small area of convection just to the west of the mid primary area and even to the east of this area, we have even more moisture just behind it so it's likely that once this approaches the caribbean islands that there's going to be plenty of moisture that's going to move over and bring a heavy amount of rainfall anywhere potentially between three to five inches of rain over a short period of time which could lead to the um the, to the concern of flooding however in terms of this having a possibility of developing it really has no chance of developing at least at this point it's currently dealing with a stronger amount of winter you could probably tell by where the outflow clouds are moving towards or seeing the outflow clouds primarily move towards the northwest which shows that there is a strong amount of uh, of a southwesterly upper level of flow that's forcing a lot of the clouds a little bit further um northward and keeping the storm a bit disorganized as it continues to head further westward and this wind shear is expected to continue so at least for the foreseeable future the chance it seems rather low that this will develop but you never know the forecast could easily change especially if um it's able to somehow avoid the upper level low that would be located in the caribbean by um the middle portion of next week which still has yet to be seen but it's do doing good when it comes to moisture um but just not um but the conditions just are not favorable enough for this to have a chance at least um for the time being Take a look at what the GFS model is forecasting when it comes to the relative humidity in the mid levels of the atmosphere. We do see that there's going to be plenty of moisture associated with this tropical wave, which could be a pretty big concern for the Caribbean islands. And at least for the Caribbean islands over the next several days, it should be rather dry as, of course, the Saharan. Um, we're going to see quite a bit of the Saharan dust move over, which will definitely create more stable conditions however as we approach next week we will see the what we will see eventually the convective activity move over and that should bring a pretty heavy amount of rain over a pretty large area so that could be concerning for many caribbean islands when it comes to the possibility of flooding however in terms of this developing we do see that there's going to be a decent amount of dry air just to the north of all this convection however i don't necessarily while i don't necessarily think it's going to be enough dry air to to, um, prevent it from developing because there is going to be plenty of convective activity the th problem will be is that the convective activity will be a little bit too elongated we do see that the convective activity is over a very large area it pretty much extends as far north as the bahamas and as far south as almost brazil and when we see uh and when we see an area of convective activity this elongated it becomes difficult for the area of moisture to uh, um, really find one center of circulation where all that energy and the air molecules could converge to for the wind speed to increase as well as the air pressure to drop along the surface so i do believe since the uh, convective activity will be a, at least a little bit too large in the near future it's unlikely we're going to see a tropical storm develop within the next five days however beyond that point it does become interesting because we will see a pretty big influx of moisture move over the caribbean as well as portions of the gulf of mexico and beyond and while the gfs model doesn't really develop anything definitive beyond the seven day mark when we um whenever we see a large area of moisture um in the during the month of august one of the most active months of the hurricane season you never know what could happen we could easily see a uh, well-defined low pressure some spawn from this influx of convective activity so um we're definitely gonna need to wait and see what happens but it seems like um two of the most reliable computer models the gfs and the european model are agreeing that there's going to be a strong amount of wind shear over the caribbean um once this um storm system actually approaches um which would be around middle the middle of next week let me show you guys a wind shear map right now 
So here's the wind shear forecast over the next several days and we do see just off the West African coast wind shear should be quite strong which should inhibit this tropical wave from having a good chance of developing and moving continuing to move even more forward with the forecast. We see that this upper level low I was talking to you guys about over the past several days that's expected to move southward. Um, it's It seems like the computer models are still persisting on that idea and that should bring a strong enough amount of wind shear to prevent this storm, um, this tropical disturbance from having a good chance of developing. We see the wind shear is quite strong, and since this tropical disturbance is expected to move towards the direction that's opposite of where the upper level winds are moving towards, that's going to enhance the wind shear even more and make it very difficult for all the energy to converge over one area and for the air molecules to move in a way that would maximize the heat engine and convective activity around the center of circulation so i'll say based on the stronger amount of wind shear this upper level low is expected to bring over the next five to seven days it's unlikely that within the short term future we're going to see tropical cyclone development maybe in the more long term future because we do see that the wind shear is rather light over the gulf of mexico and the western portion of the caribbean so you never know if it's able to escape this upper level low then the chance will certainly increase we're just gonna need it's just a little bit too far to say um for certain at this time so make sure to stay tuned for more updates in the long term future but regardless of whether this develops into a child will storm or not it, the caribbean still needs to pay attention to the possibility of heavy rain by the middle of next week flooding rain at that so definitely at least keep tabs on it over the next several days we see that when it comes to wind shear as well, the European model is also forecasting a very similar scenario and upper level lows should move right over the Caribbean islands and bring a strong, just enough of a strong um, upper level flow for um, tropical cyclone development to be rather difficult by the time this tropical disturbance moves through the islands. However, beyond that point, we still do see the wind shear does become light. So if this moisture is able to survive once it approaches the Gulf of Mexico area, who knows, we could potentially see the possibility of tropical cyclone development. Here's what the European model is forecasting over the next several days. We do see that the European model is bringing a high amount of moisture with this tropical disturbance. And it's very similar to what the GFS model is stating when it comes to the exact um, area of how large the convective activity will be. The rain isn't necessarily as heavy or the humidity, but it still brings a heavy amount of rain over Hispaniola and even Cuba. And moving forward with the forecast, we do see the moisture still survives by the time it reaches the Gulf of Mexico. So you never know. Of course, we've seen plenty of tropical cyclones in the past that struggle um, between, um, its, between its journey through the main development region as well as the Caribbean, but become monster type storms by the time they approach the Gulf of Mexico. Definitely not implying that we're going to see, let's say, another Hurricane Harvey where this um, hurricane or what would become Hurricane Harvey was struggling as it moved through the main development region as well as the Caribbean, but just exploded in terms of strength by the time it made landfall in Texas. And so did Hurricane Katrina. But it's definitely at least something to be aware of when we see a higher amount of moisture move over this area because of course um, hurricanes and tropical cyclones in general are pr um, prominently um, do strengthen quite a bit by the time they approach the Gulf of Mexico. So this is the amount of rainfall you should expect over the Caribbean over the next week and we do see along with this tropical wave the rain should be quite heavy where you should expect anywhere from two to four inches of rain over Puerto Rico, a large portion of the Lesser Antilles as well as a large portion of Dominican Republic and Haiti, especially in the higher elevations and even going into Cuba. So you definitely need to watch out for heavier rainfall and thunder shower activity as we approach um, the early, uh, early to mid part of next week. Another thing I want to show you guys is taking a look at the very long term future into the middle part of August. We could see that another tropical wave come off the West African coast that could potentially have a higher chance of developing. It's very rare during the month of August we see no tropical cyclones develop. So I would definitely, um, uh, I would definitely at least be aware of this potential um, tropical wave coming off the African coast at around the mid-August time frame. Still way too early to say that anything for certain will happen, but definitely at least be aware of it. 
So here what the European Ensemble members are forecasting at this time and we do see that at least for the tropical wave that's expected to come off the West African coast in um, um, right around the mid-August time frame, we could see the, uh, the potential of tropical cyclone development. It seems like for this um, tropical wave that we're keeping a track of right now won't have a high chance of, de of developing, but this tr next tropical wave um, that would um, be a, uh, that would come off the West African coast right around mid August could potentially have a higher chance. So we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to that. But outside of that, really not much when it comes to the European model on some members um, agreeing that we're going to see a tropical cyclone. Same goes for the G GFS ensemble members, which are all taking very weak scenarios when it comes to tropical cyclone development. So it's definitely um, so, which is definitely good news, and hopefully it stays that way for uh, the longest time possible. Um, but still, keep be aware of the hurricane season because, as you know, it could um, things could change very quickly. Here's a look at the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook. We do see that there's the National Hurricane Center isn't expecting new, uh, any um, possibility of a tropical cyclone over the next seven days, which is certainly good news. Hopefully it stays that way and there is a good possibility it'll stay that way at least for the foreseeable future. We're going to need to pay close attention to this tropical wave once it approaches the Western Car Caribbean because things could change by the time it approaches around that area. But as for now, it seems like things look good over the Northern Atlantic. So here's my overall forecast when um, determining when Chuggle Storm Emily could form. So at least for the near future, within the next five to seven days, I'll say it's highly unlikely. At this time, it seems like there's going to be too much wind shear. However, um, we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to heavy rainfall right over the Caribbean islands associated with this tropical wave and potentially a little bit more into the long term future for tropical cyclone development. So make sure to stay tuned for more updates. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.